Hello, this is Bryn Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to be doing a tour of the OneSearch function at the SMC Library website. So to get there, from the Santa Monica College homepage, you click on Menu, scroll down to Student Support and click on the plus sign, and scroll down to Library between Counseling and Tutoring. From there, if you'd like, you can ask a librarian directly for help. This is 24-7 research assistance, so you will always get a librarian anytime, day or night, when you ask us. As you scroll down the page, OneSearch is in the center of the page, and this is sort of a conglomeration of everything that we own or subscribe to. So say I am going to be doing a research study on deep fakes. I spell it right. When I search that out, notice that it automatically defaults to online access. That's because we're remote right now. When we go back on campus, you also have the option of books and videos on library shelves where you can get print books and videos that you can check out and take home. Now when I take a look at my result for deep fakes, which is a relatively specific search, I still get 36,000 plus results. That's way too many. Um, and some of them, when I look directly at it, that has cannot figure out what Orson Welles, the Pocket Essential Guide, has to do with deep fakes. So, as you can tell, it looks for the words individually and brings you anything that has those words listed in it. So, I need to filter my results. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and say, what did my teacher require of me? If the teacher says you have to use peer-reviewed journals, I'm going to limit it to that. Okay. I'm also going to take a look at format. Now this is the format of these specific results. Journals contain a lot of things. They contain book reviews, they contain front and back matter, they contain opinion pieces even sometimes. So I want articles specifically in these peer-reviewed journals. Then I'm going to go down a little bit further and I'm going to say as a scholarly journal article, I only want maybe the last five to ten years, and since this is a technology type of topic, I only maybe want the last five years. This goes all the way back to 1900, so no. We're going to change that to 2015. Okay. And because I need to be able to read it, and I also need my teacher to be able to read it if they check on my sources, which they might, it's got to be in English. And then I'm going to move this a little so you can see this button. I'm going to apply filters. And that takes my search and cuts out about two-thirds of it. It's still a few too many, but it gives me something to start with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a look at the dates. Now when you see a date that is in parentheses, that is usually the date when the journal started publication, so that's not the date of the article. The date of the article is next to it, so this is from September of 2019. This one, same journal, same volume. So it looks like the Maryland Law Review did an entire article on various things about deepfakes. Here's another one from 2019. There's some stuff about figuring out counterfeits. And notice that it will highlight where your search terms are. So if your search terms are next to each other, like this, it's appropriate. If they're spread open like this, probably not. So I'm going to pick one to show you what it looks like. When I click on that, it will tell me a little bit about the actual article. It will give me the information I need for my citation, and it will give me some subjects. These subjects are Library of Congress subject headings, which are standardized by librarians at the Library of Congress. And they determine this article or book is specifically about this topic and we're going to use this word to describe it, and everything that is on that topic, we will use this same word. So if I use that same word as a search term, everything in the whole database that has that 
attached to it will be drawn into my search. And it's a way to expand your search without racking your brain trying to find new ways to say what you're looking for. You notice when you look at it that deepfakes is not actually a subject. Deception is, but not deepfakes. So my topic is actually too new for the Library of Congress to have created and standardized and applied a subject for it. So this tells me how they approach the topic. Then I decide, well, I want this article. I can click on it and it will open up a tab. If I have not already logged in, I am required to do so because only people who are students, faculty, staff of Santa Monica College can have access to these databases. So log in the same way you would with Canvas and eventually it will let you in. And it will show you, here is my article. Here are the subject terms it uses, which as you see are very different than the catalog used. All the information I need for my citation. And where's the article? It's over here in the PDF. Now you have options at this point. You can open up the PDF, read it, download it, send it to yourself. You can add it to your Google Drive. You can print it out, add it to a folder, or email it. I tend to email as I go. So if I decide I want to email this, I email it to myself. I give it some kind of a subject. Do not send in plain text format. The PDF will come as a separate attachment, and I can ask it for citation help. This is alphabetical by title. We are not in Brazil, so we're not using the Brazilian national standards. Instead, depending on which class you're in, you may use APA or MLA. So I'm going to use MLA because this is for an English class, and I send that off. It will tell you that it has been sent. Give it a few minutes to show up. Then if I want more, I just close this tab, I close this pop-up, and I go back and take a look for something else. Okay. Now if my teacher has told me you need to use a book for this, I can go up and without even changing my search, I can take off peer-reviewed journals, I can take off articles, that pops me back to my 36,000 that I found at the beginning. Now here my availability wants to be available online because they need to be ebooks since I can't get into the library right now. And my format, instead of being articles, will be books. Then I apply those filters with the green button at the bottom and that changes my results considerably. It also tells me that we don't have any books yet on deep fakes. I'm seeing deep learning, deep learning, deep learning. When I click on subject, do not click on electronic books because they're all ebooks. Instead take a look and you'll notice that all of these are on computer programming until we get to two of them on journalistic ethics, which is unusual for this list of subjects. So when I apply that filter, I come up with one book, and it is an older book. So that tells me that for this particular topic, it is too new for any academic books to have been thoroughly thought out, gone through the editing and the publishing and the acquisitions process, so what I'd need to do is I'd need to look around my topic. What do deep fakes do? What are they aimed at? What's the background? How have people faked people out before? And I would find books on those things. At that point, I would want to talk with my teacher about how to apply a current topic um, that is too current to have academic books on it and find history and context in books surrounding that topic. And if um, you need further assistance with that, ask a librarian, and you can do that right up here. 
This again is 24-7 chat reference. If you have any questions, please ask us. Best of luck with your research.